chairman recognizes the gentleman from Wisconsin. That makes me feel good, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Um, Chair Kahn, thank you for being here today. Last December, I sent you a letter along with several of my colleagues asking about the FTC's consideration of environmental, social, and corporate governance factors, or ESG as it's known, in merger enforcement. I appreciate that you had a prompt response in answering that FTC would not support conditioning the approval of the unlawful merger on the adoption of a particular set of ESG policies or commitments. Uh, while pleased with the first part of the response, uh, you did not answer whether you would block a merger if it met traditional comp competition criteria but falls short of some standard on uh, ESG goals. Can you commit that ESG criteria will not play a role in a decision by the FTC to block a merger? Microphone, please. Apologies. We look at the text of the statutes, which tell us to block mergers if they substantially lessen competition or tend to create a monopoly. That's what we look at. Again, if companies make certain commitments to us about social justice commitments or ESG commitments, those are irrelevant to us. Okay, thank you. Since becoming chair, have you ever communicated using Signal, WhatsApp, or through a different encrypted messaging app on matters principally related to antitrust or consumer protection policy, FTC enforcement actions, press, political strategy, or any official communication? In particular, uh, I'm interested to see if you've had any communication with Senator Warren, state's attorneys general, or outside groups. Congressman, the FTC has a very clear policy requiring that any FTC business relating to substantial matters be conducted only on authorized FTC devices, and I fully comply with that policy. Did you have any communication with your now senior advisor, Ms. Sarah Miller? Sarah Miller works for you, is that right? Ms. Miller joined my staff earlier this year, correct. Uh, while she was in her role at the Economic Liberties Project, uh, regarding the decision to air attack ads on members of this committee, including myself, for our opposition to the FTC's proposed non-compete rule. Uh, Congressman, I talked to a lot of people, but I'm never involved in those types of discussions. So you weren't involved in, in the uh, idea to, in fact, go after members of this committee uh, Congressman, in their districts? Uh, Congressman, we're really excited about this proposal. We're accepting a lot of public comments. We're eager to hear from members of com Congress. I've talked to many of you about the proposal. Uh, we're eager to hear your, your feedback and input. It was announced last night that you intended to break 30 years of precedent by challenging the court's ruling in the merger of Microsoft and Activision. Can you explain why, despite 39 countries and the European Union already clearing this merger that you intend to move forward with, and admin, on administrative proceedings. So Congressman, again, this matter is pending before the commission in our administrative adjudication, so I can't comment on the merits. When we get an adverse ruling, our teams look closely at the text of the opinion, determine whether there are errors of law that they believe warrant an appeal. Those are the types of considerations that they take into account. In April this year, the FTC's Associate Director for Litigation for the Bureau of Competition stated at a conference that, quote, merger policy is industrial policy. And, quote, there is a role for merger policy in directing the way capital flows into projects. That means at the next venture capital meeting, they're not going to say, what's the exit via acquisition? It will be, how do we get to an IPO? Do you endorse this statement? Congressman, I'm not familiar with the details of it. Happy to look at it in a question for the record. I'll say generally, it is true that antitrust and competition policy is about ensuring robust competition. Entrepreneurs benefit from that. Startups benefit from that. I just met with some venture capitalists the other week that were expressing concern about a lack of exit options that don't involve being bought up by one of the large technology companies. So these are certainly issues that we hear about. I think... Um, the issue for myself and many of my colleagues has been that the way you're running the FTC, that you're not simply trying to kill deals in the boardroom. You're also killing small businesses still in the crib. You want startups to seek an IPO rather than an acquisition, but the cost of entering the public markets has doubled since the 90s. And your colleague, Mr. Gensler, at the SEC has been piling on with the rulemaking. So I don't know if uh, this is what the administration means by Biden economics, uh, but I have to ask, why would anyone start a small business 
under this administration right now? So, Congressman, we hear regularly from small businesses. Uh, one of the things that we started since I joined the commission is open commission meetings where anybody in the country can sign up and come talk to us. We hear from a lot of small businesses. More often than not, what we hear is about the challenges that they face in being able to compete in an open, competitive marketplace. We hear about how the existing giants and existing incumbents are squeezing them and making it difficult, be it for an independent grocer, an independent pharmacist. So we are very eager to hear from small businesses and make sure we're enforcing the laws in the ways that are enabling everybody to compete in the marketplace. Chairman, I yield back. 